builder's log, prologue. So, what you're going to need for this project is very simple, and I'm going to go through the build here in the next video, little thing here, but here's what I have. First off, you're going to have to watch my first video upon using Arduino and XP together. So, I'm just taking all this apart. I have an XP unit, 900 megahertz. Again, I showed that in the first video in the series. It goes on top of this shield. Okay, so you're going to need the shield and the XP unit. You're going to need an Arduino. And you're going to need a prototyping shield. Okay, and the prototyping shield must have uh, a small breadboard on the top. You're going to need two red and two green um, extension cables. And you're going to need an optic isolator. The optic isolator is an AQW. 280EH from Panasonic. Okay. So, also, you're going to need this. It's a remote controlled outlet. Bought mine at Target. $14. Okay. And it looks sort of like this out of the box. Okay, remote side on this side, always on on this side. Now I'll go through a little bit of this in the next video upon how to uh, put this all together and then we'll look at the code after that. Builder's Log, Jason Welsh, 10-28-11. All right, so what I wanted to do was extrapolate on my other uh, invention of being able to transmit signal from an RF XP to another RF XP and now I want to control something like an AC outlet so I went to Target and I picked up this little butte okay it's a remote controlled outlet and it comes with a little remote that I already tore apart but I think I got that yeah, here's the shell okay, this is what it used to look like until I gutted it Alright, now what made this one so special? There's a hundred of these on the market. If you go and find one of these, you must find one that has this type of button. Okay? The reason being that some of these have buttons that are soft pushed or upon contact, and I don't have one available right now to show you, but uh, if you ever tore apart a keyboard in your lifetime, it has a little pressure sensitive gooey thing that just pushes down and it makes contact and it's based upon resistance well based upon resistance I can't hook up a relay to it so now uh, in order to execute this build what I did is I flipped it over and I found the wires that make the contacts upon those switches this one this one this one this one so you can see here when I press down this button, the brown wire, these two connect. And these, the blue wire on the other side. To test this out, all I do is have to short these two wires and the device would kick on and off. In this case, I have a little fan hooked up. Let me move this. Here. And we're going to click this little button on off. All right, cool. So now what we do is have to rig it so it fits on a breadboard. Uh, why a breadboard? Because I'll show you here in a second. What I did is I found some header pins, and you can buy header pins from a great many of places. I got mine at Adip Root, but you can get it at Spark Fun too. These and I took out four of them and drilled holes in the board and then mounted these wires by soldering them to the top of the header pins and then I super glued right here now it fits down in a breadboard why a breadboard? well here's my Arduino now so let me move the camera back here And I'll start over with this build. This is an opto isolator chip. 
it's a solid state relay what happens is if you have a positive and negative so a positive goes in right here negative and positive negative it will short these two pins on the other side and cause a ground so what I need to do is just have this here that way when I put positive here it shorts these two wires if I put a positive here it shorts these two wires so how do you do that well very easy you have a ground here and then you have a positive and in this case I'm using pin 9 and pin 11 on my Arduino so all I do is hit hook up pin 9 which is that one to positive get another wire over here this one to the third pin down on it and then my ground will run from ground here to pin 2 and then again what I'll do is run another ground from pin 2 to pin 4 now after a while you don't want these big huge stupid wires going on but for right it, it, it's a good uh, beta build so that's my hookup not too hard a little bit of soldering required I use network cable or I tore that apart to get these thinner wires you can buy these wires at Radio Shack you know a little bit of a thinner wire but I found if you take a network cable apart you get enough wire to supply half of Europe with one roll. <laughs> it's great. Um, and I'll probably rig this battery so it's a little bit more stable in the future but for right now that works out for a beta build. Now let's look at the code. Alright so before we get into the code let me kinda explain the function of this device. Uh, basically what I'm trying to do is control an AC unit from a very great distance. Now, the unit comes with a remote control, and that remote control only goes to about 25 to 30 feet. Well, 25 to 30 feet isn't much. What I want to do is go way more than that. I want to be able to control it from the road or maybe three blocks away. Okay, so in order to do that, we're looking at the 900 megahertz range. The remote is only in the 400 megahertz range, so it's not going to reach that far that it's based on low, low, low standards and so I don't control the neighbor's TV with it or anything dangerous like that so the FCC doesn't allow uh, those little tiny remotes to go very high with that range or frequency. Now, that being said, it's a very easy operation and now I've kind of isolated the AC current so I am not playing with AC current at all. I am only playing with RF signals. So this is a very safe experiment for all students, all kids, anybody that wants to play around with uh, Arduino, XP, or anybody, anything else, because I'm not physically touching any of the AC current. So let's go into the code. The code states as follows. Well, first off, I have to initiate a couple pins. So initiation of pins begins now. In this case, I'm looking at pin 9 and 11. Then I have to do a brief setup. The setup is as follows. All I'm doing is first initiating the serial at 9600. Now technically, you wouldn't even have to use an XB if you didn't want to. You could hook the Arduino right up to the serial port or the USB and run it that way and just run code by initiating some one and zero. Well, we'll get into that maybe later. For right now, I, this is all about long range frequency of RF. So here's my initiating pin of an output, LED pin one and LED pin two. Now, the loop. Loop's always fun. Oh, don't forget the closing bracket here. Now the loop is just like the loop I covered in the first video, 
I'm just going to slap it all down at once and then walk you through it. So it's still handling serial data, anything greater than zero. It'll read it. And if it's a one, it's going to bring the LED pin one high. I have to put a delay here. Uh, and because of that, what I want to do is immediately turn the pin low. If I don't do this, the next if statement will not work. So I'm initiating it high, turning it to a positive, and then turning back to a negative. And I'm serial printing that out. Now, if I do that again, this time I'm looking for a 2 in the data stream. This time, LED pin 2 is high. And then brought down low. Else, if I don't have a 1 or a 2, it'll just print out whatever I type in terminal. So again, here's terminal, and you can see that my little XP isn't hooked up, so I'll hook up my XP. This is the one that hooks to the computer. Let's do a test query. Do a read on it. Now, I don't even have to do that, really. All I do is have to kind of get into the COM port itself and into the terminal packet. So here's a 1 and a 2. Very easy stuff. Nothing's hooked up right now as far as the XB on the other line. But if it was, it would send a terminal command back. In this case, I'll just quickly hook up a battery pack to it and not show it on video. So now I should have a 1, and now it trails with three dots. That's stating that it is, in fact, reading it out, and now 2 with a dot. So actually, it has to only retune one dot in order for me to know that the transmission between the two units are working correctly. All right, and nothing else is hooked up as far as the, the AC unit right now. But we'll go into that in the next section of the video. But for right now, that's my code. Enjoy. This will also be in the show notes using a Google Doc. All right, so here's a sample of how it works. So what I'm going to do is send a terminal signal to this switch right here to turn that on and then turn the fan on very carefully. And this will cool my um, very hot soldering iron. <laughs> of course, that's a stupid application for it, but that's okay. It's the fact that I'm turning on an AC unit with one of these. And all of this because it's hooked up to this plug right here. Okay, let's go back down and let's see if I can trigger this via remote. Okay, so I'm back over here and in one, two, three. Now I'll turn it off. Perfect. On. Off. And that's how you interface an Arduino with um, an AC outlet. Enjoy.